إن الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد الله مسلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله مبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم So whenever we are blessed with any good deed whenever we commit any good deed so we should all refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Mu'ajib the one stuck with the vanity he feels that he did out of his own performance he did it out of his own own will and he doesn't refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is away from Allah and uh, this yad'u al-abd ila al-ikhtar ala bi nafsi and a person is living in his self deception and he is he feels skewed off the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ya'manu makra Allah he feels skewed from the plans of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his punishment so he's living in his under this false impression and thinks that he has a position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yadunnu anna annahu inda Allah bi makan he thinks that he has a good position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore la yasma'u nushu nasin you will not find him listening to the nasiha of others because he is he is living under this false impression that he is better wala wa'da wa is not he listens to the wa's to the admonition of others and this ujub prevents him yamna'uhu an an su'ali ahli al-ilm this ujub it prevents him to ask the people of knowledge because he thinks if i ask it means that i don't know anything it his self glory his vain glory his self conceit he feel it is hit it is brought to rubbles if he asks others yamna'uhu an su'al ahli al-ilm it prevents him to ask the men of knowledge so this way the doors of knowledge are closed because su'al or asking the questions is a life of knowledge but it should not be just to show to show to others just to seek to learn more or to to and from the knowledge to strengthen the knowledge the sual and imam al bukhari rahimahullah subhanahu rahimahullah taala says that a sual is nisf al ilm question is half of the knowledge and that's quite obvious if we ask about a particular thing so half of the knowledge we achieved means we know about it then what it is all about that we have to know so a sual is nisf al ilm and this ujub it prevents a person to ask questions because it makes him to think that okay if he asks questions others will feel that okay he he or she doesn't know he or she doesn't have the high level of understanding he or she needs to explain it more so this prevents a person from a lot of khair a lot of good and the worst of all يحبط العمل يحبط العمل destroy the good amal ويفسده ويذهب به all his good deeds are the reward of good deeds is taken away hafiz ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says that لا شيء افسد للاعمال there's nothing more dangerous more disastrous for the amal for the good deeds min al ujub than the vain glory than this self conceit it destroys the amal of the people but you see that many of us we are unaware about it the disease of the body is quite experience it we can feel it but the disease of the heart 
is something which we always ignore, which we which we always neglect. So Hafiz ibn Hafiz ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah taala he says, لا شيء أفسد للأعمال من الأجوب. The most disastrous and the dangerous thing for all amal for the good deeds is it, it is ujub and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran la tubtilu sadaqatikum do not spoil your charity do not destroy your charity la tubtilu sadaqatikum how bil manni wal adha by expressing the favor and uh, The just gist of ujub, the crux of the ujub is that it, whoever is struck with this disease, his dunya and his akhirah is all destroyed. Therefore, we are supposed to take care of the amalul qulub, the acts of the heart. We are supposed to take care of our heart all the time. Imam Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, uh, I have been always taking care of the heart. I mean, this is the thing. And it is on the base of the heart the people are stratified, distinguished. Otherwise, our base plexus is all same. There is no difference in terms of physiology, in terms of our anatomy. The most pious person is having the same organs as it of the most vicious and most wicked person. And what lies the difference between the two? The difference is on the base of akhlaq, amal, values, ideals. And these all rest in the heart. So the hearts determine the positions of the people. It stratifies the, it stratifies the people. And once it is hardened and it is stuck with these diseases, the levels of the human beings are deflating, decreasing, decreasing and then it becomes even more deplorable than the animals, more horrendous than the animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They'll be having these biological pumps, kulub. They'll be having the hearts, life kahuna biha, but deprive it of the understanding, deprive it of the recognition of truth from the falsehood. Lahum a'yun. They have the two eyes fitted into the eye socket, like the two torches. They have the eyes, but deprived of recognizing the truth, seeing the truth. They have the earlobes. They can see the audible sounds. They can hear the audible sounds. They have the ears. But they cannot listen to the truth. They are like the animals. If at this level, Aristotle says man is a social animal, I say yes, I do subscribe to this. Man is a social animal then. He's an animal having his own having his own society, living in a social system, in a social structure. But the difference between the animal and the him and Quran says, Balhum Adal. Balhum azal, even they are more worse than the animals. Because by the end of the day, animals are doing the job they are created for. It's a set programming for them, and they cannot cross the limits. But this one crosses all the limits. So the you can say the top uh, ill consequence, evil consequence of Ujub is that Fasadu Dunya wal Akhirah. It destroys the dunya and the akhirah of a person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, <coughs> uh, in the Quran about the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. At the time of Battle of Hunayn, Ghazbatu Hunayn or Battle of Hunayn, Allah says in Surah Al-Tawbah, verse number, verse number 25, Qad nasarakabu Allah Indeed, Allah granted His support and help to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you at many places, at many occasions. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 
helped you at many occasions. Wayamul Hunain, specifically on the bat on the day of Hunain, the battle of Hunain. If Ajabat Kum Kathratukum when you were under the false impression of having a good number of fighters with you. Falam tukuni antkum shay'a your abundance your being a law you were at the time of Badr we know that the proportion was one is to three. So how about three hundred and thirteen and the disbelievers one thousand. So proportion was almost one is to three. So the number of Muslims were quite less and the number of disbelievers it was quite large. But at the time of Hunayn the number of Muslims were quite large. So it is on the basis of their large number, they were sure that now they will win the war. However, the Allah knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how to turn the tables over to make them understand, to make them realize that, that all the Nasr, Fatah, the help, the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come in qalilatin, ghalabat fiatin kathiratun bi'idhlillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kam min fiatin galila. Many a small groups, they, they turn out to be victorious upon the large groups of the army. As they witness it at the time of battle of Badr. As I said, ratio was one is to three. And the disbelievers highly equipped with arms and ammunition. And the sahaba less equipped. Kam min fiatin qalilatin. Many small groups, they turn to be victorious upon the large companies of the army. And we have recently witnessed in Afghanistan, North, North Atlantic Treaty Organization comprising of 54 countries and that to the strongest 54 countries of the world. They were all raised to rubbles by just small group of people with less arms and ammunition. Come in fiat in Kalilatin. Ghalabat fiat in Kathiratun bi Idnillah. A true believer always trusts upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though he doesn't ignore the means, we have to adopt the means. But trusting the means is shirk. Adoption of means is sunnah. But trusting the means alone, it is shirk, a kind of shirk. So on the occasion of battle of Hunayn, what happened? The Sahaba, they were quite large in number. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذْ أَعَجَبَتْكُمْ كَثْرَتُكُمْ When your excessive number or your large number developed a self-conceit in you. Now we are in a better position. We can defeat them, we can beat them, we can bash them. Then what happened? وَذَوَقَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأَرْضِ the whole earth uh, squeeze it as if there's not a single place that is going to provide refuge to them. So, uh, Imam Jafar ta'ala says, Istijlabun nasri fi shayin wahid. If you want to seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it lies in one thing only. Wahuwa zillat wal iftiqar wal ajis. Is expression of our humbleness our humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are helpless expressing our helplessness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a single thing the lone thing that can bring help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we recognize our helplessness our humbleness when we recognize our inability then it brings the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَحُلُولُ الْخِزْلَانِ بِشَيْنْ وَاحِدْ What brings the defeat is only again one thing only. That brings the defeat to the people, to the believers, and that is Al-Ujbu. The Sahaba, أَعَجَبَتْكُمْ is a root word of, root word is Ujub. So it is Sulasi Majid, he is, أَعَجَبَ يُعْجِبُ إِعْجَابًا أَعَجَبَتْكُمْ كَفْرَتُكُمْ You develop the Ujub in your hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a reprimand as a lesson for them 
they, initially they, they, they faced a lot of loss. They were defeated initially. But later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them and they realized this, that their reliance upon the large number was their mistake. So they all turned, their hearts turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expressed their helplessness, that we cannot do anything without your help. So Imam Jafar says, Rahimullah, istijlabu nasr fi shayin wahid. If you want to seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only through one thing, expressing our inability, expressing our helplessness and our humbleness to Him. Khulul al-Khizlan and the defeat, how, how come defeat encompasses a person? It is again only through one thing. Al-Ujbu, it is self-conceit. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ دُرُّ دَعَانَا When a man is afflicted with any misery, with any difficulty, دَعَانَا He supplicates to us, he turns to us. ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلْنَاهُ نِعْمَةً مِنَّا So after proper supplications, excessive supplications, when we replace that difficulty with the with the ni'mah, with the blessing, قال, now he says, إِنَّمَا أُعْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ I deserve this. It's all because of my capability. It's all because of my proper planning. It's all because of my proper... I put in place the proper strategy. That's why I, I was blessed with this thing. Balhiya fitna. It was a test for him. Before he was asking a lot, supplicating a lot. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced that difficulty with the ease, with the ni'mah, with the blessing and bounty. Qal innama utituhu ala ilm. He says, I was blessed this out of my own knowledge, out of my own skill, out of my own. This doesn't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't recognize our knowledge, our skill. Yeah, we have to we have to use it, we have to make effective use of it. But by after doing all our efforts, we need to just refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Balhiya fitna, it was a means of test. Akhtarum la ya'lamu. Most of them don't have the knowledge, the, the true knowledge. Hafiz bin Kasir rahimahullah ta'ala while commenting on this verse, it is in the Surah Al-Zumar. Hafiz bin Kasir says rahimahullah Yaqulu ta'ala mukhbiran alil insan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us about the human being annahu fi hali darra yadra'u ila Allah azza wa jal that in a state of difficulty when he, when he's surrounded by Surrounded by the difficulties. Yadra'u ila Allah. Now he, he expresses his helplessness to Allah. He supplicates to Him. He uses all invocations. He turns to Him. And then He supplicates to Him. However, وَإِذَا خَوَّ لَهُ مِنْهُ نِعْمَةً بَقَى وَتَقَى Bagha wa taqha. Bagha wa taqha. Subhanallah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces that difficulty with some ni'mah, with some blessing, Bagha, he turns rebel. Wa taqha crosses all the limits. Bagha wa and tughiyan. These are two things. Bagha wa. Tughiyan, taqha means crossing the limits. But bagha is turns rebel. Against the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالْ إِنَّمَا أُعْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِ I deserve this. So I was blessed with this. هَيْ لِمَا يَعْلَمُ اللَّهِ مِنْ إِسْتِحْقَاقِ لَهِ وَلَوْ لَعَنِّي إِنَّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ خَسِيسٌ لَمَا خَوَّلْنِي هَذَا Hafiz ibn Kasir rahimahullah says is a feeling of a person in the heart. He says, he thinks that Allah knows that I deserve this. That's why Allah gave it to me. Otherwise, if I didn't deserve this, why should, I have, why, should Allah had, why should Allah have given it to me? He wouldn't have given it to me if I didn't deserve it. Since I deserve it, therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to me. وَلَوْلَا عَنِّي إِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ خَسِيسِ Had it not been special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Had he not possessed a special status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَمَّا خَوَّ لَنِي هَذَا Allah wouldn't have given this to me. Allah wouldn't have replaced the difficulty with the ease and with the ni'mah. And this is, this is ujub. And this is destroying the heart of a person. Because Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the Fir'aun in Quran. These were the baby steps that led Fir'aun to claim to be God. وَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى And he said, I'm your Lord, the greatest. So these were the things, these were the feelings which he harbored in his heart. After harboring these feelings in the heart, it destroyed his heart and then ultimately he began to claim to be God. وَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى And Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Baina rajul yamshi fi hullatin tu'jibuhu nafsu. A man was walking in his beautiful dress, in his beautiful garment. Tu'jibuhu nafsu. Now we can see in our modern, modern day jargon, the branded clothes. Tu'jibuhu nafsu. Now he feels something special than others. Others cannot buy this much. It's only me who can buy this this expensive suit, expensive dress, expensive garment. Murajal Jimmata. And then he has all also dressed up his hairs. And they're too expensive. And a man is walking in this in a, in a state of the self-conceit, wearing the branded clothes, and then dressed up the hairs. إِذْ خَسَفَ اللَّهُ بِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him to sink into the earth. فَهُوَ تَجَلْجَلُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And he'll be sinking on and on until the last day to come. Imam Abu al-Abbas al-Qurtubi رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى Imam Qurtubi was a famous Spanish scholar from Spain, Muslim Spain of, of course. <laughs> And Qurtuba is a place which is known as Cordova. There was a university, Muslim university, Islamic university, University of Qurtuba, Cordova, or Jamiatu Qurtuba. Imam Qurtubi was from the same place. That's why he's known as Abu Abbas al Qurtubi, rahimahullah ta'ala. He says, Yufid had al hadith, Tarkul amd bin ta'ajil al muwakhazat al zunub. This hadith. It informs us that if a person is not punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his wrongdoings, he should not be under his false impression that now he is something special to Allah. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays his punishment and there's a hikmah behind it. Sometimes maybe the servant returns back to me or sometimes giving more respite to him or sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the the uh, arrogant nature of a person and Allah wants him, wants him to be absorbed and drowned into the sins more and more so a person should not feel scared if he's performing disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah didn't punish him it's two lessons we learn from the hadith one a person should not feel at rest, at ease. While, while disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah delays his punishment. He should not be under the, under the false impression that uh, Allah is not going to do anything to him. The second thing is that the ujub out of the dress, out of the one's position, conditions, is all haram and is all a major sin. So ujub is which is going to destroy a person. It is ujub fil hal. Then the ujub fil ibadah. Ujub fil ibadah, which I discussed before, that classification of ujub in terms of deen, in terms of uh, dunya. And if a person develops the ujub in in ibadah, that he feels that he is better than others, then he, he despises others. He looks at others with scorn, with a scornful sight, and he. Uh, 
he feels that they are all the disobedient servants and they deserve the hell, they deserve the punishment. I am the one who deserves the Jannah. This will destroy the good amal of a person. As Imam Ibn Jawzi says, Rahimahullah, that it destroys the amal of a person. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Law, law, law lam taznibu lakhashitu alaykum ma huwa akbaru minhu. He said, if you don't perform the sins. And now, the hadith, I, I always say that hadith is a proper context. If it is taken out of context, then sometimes it may be misleading. And that's why Sayyiduna Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah said, Sufyan al-Thawri, great muhaddis, he said, Al-Hadithu madallatun. Hadith is misleading. Illa lil-fuqaha, except for the fuqaha. Except for those who are the experts of the hadith. Because they know the proper contextualization of the hadith. If any hadith is taken out of context, it may be misleading. That's why we need to understand the hadith tradition in a proper context. So Prophet said, if you don't perform the sins, if you don't commit the sins, it is in this context as a means of cure to ujub. <laughs> if you don't perform the sin, I am more apprehensive, I am more scared about you which is more greater than the sin, which is more greater than performing the sin or commission of the sin, that is al-ujbu. Your ibadah may develop ujub in you and that's more disastrous and dangerous than commission of the sins. Because I said before, when a person commits a sin, he has this feeling of discomfort, regretfulness in the heart, I did something wrong. So he is, they are, they are, we can say 99.999% possibility that he may be blessed with a tawbah. But the one who is struck with the disease is performing ibadah and his ibadah makes him to think that now he is special. This should have brought, this should have developed a kind of humbleness because the death by definition, what is the definition of ibadah? Is ghayatul zul, expressing the extreme and excessive humbleness. Ma ghayatul hub, with extreme love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any ibadah which does not bring the humbleness in a person is not ibadah. Is a means of destruction for a person. The very essence of ibadah, the synthesis of ibadah, it is it must develop a kind of humbleness, humility in a person. That's why all Ambiya alayhim salatu taslim, they're all humble. All companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and all ulama, the, the true ulama, al ulama al rabbani yun, not the ulama su, the wicked ulama, which we discussed the other day. You will always find them humble, not no no any arrogance sprouting from them. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Law lam taznabu. If you don't commit the sins, la khashitu alaykum ma huwa akbaru minhu. Then I'm more concerned about you, more apprehensive about you, which is more, which is far greater, far disastrous than the sins. This al ujubu. It is self conceit. Imam Manawi rahimahullah taala. Well, commenting on the hadith, he says, Because the disobedient person, when person, a person turns disobedient, and, or when he commits any act of disobedience, he acknowledges that he did something wrong. So it is hoped that he may also adopt the path of tawbah. And the one who is stuck with this self-conceit, he's in a, he's living in a fool's paradise. Maghroor, he's dis, in deception. He's deceived by his amal. He's away from tawbah. He's far away from tawbah. And Sayyiduna Salman radiallahu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Salasatun la yadkhulun al jannah." Three types of people won't enter the jannah. A Sheikh Uzani, the married old person who commits the zina, he won't enter the paradise. Well, Imam al Kazab and the Imam, the leader of the Muslims, who, who turns out to be a liar, he won't enter the Jannah. Well, Ahil al Mazhu, and the one who is struck with the vain, this, this Zahu, Zahu means vainglory, self conceit. 
these three types of people won't enter the paradise it means won't enter the paradise it doesn't mean that they'll be denied the entry for entry to paradise always it means that they have to go to hellfire first because each and every person prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in another hadith which in sahih muslim that after all people are sent to jahannam and jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command, a, command an angel, you go to Jahannam, you go to the hellfire and you see if any person possess the iman to the weight of an atom, to the weight of a mustard seed, just take him out and take him to the Jannah. Bring him to Jannah. But the, when Prophet la yadkhulun al-Jannah, these three types of people won't enter the paradise, it means that they have to face the punishment. And however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's the he's the master. Everything lies in his hands. If he if a person makes a tawbah, or even sometimes without the tawbah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can also forgive such a person. Maybe there is some quality in him. Out of that quality, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgives that person because except the shirk, all the sins are pardonable, forgivable. Except the shirk. Even shirk can be forgiven if a person makes the tawbah. But without the tawbah, if a person dies, then it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to deal with such a person. And uh, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu he said, Akhwafu ma akhafu alikum an tahlaku fihi salasu khisal. The most dangerous thing, I'm scared of you. That you be destroyed by these things. There are, there are three qualities. If you develop these three qualities, then... Uh, your destruction is certain. First one, shuhun muta'. Shuhun muta'. Shuh means miserliness, niggardliness. A person doesn't spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this miserliness, he follows the example of others. You see, a, you see your friend, you see a person... He, despite having the wealth, doesn't spend. Despite having the knowledge, doesn't spend. Despite having the capabilities, doesn't spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the most destructive thing in a person. Wahawa muttaba And the vain desires which are followed. A person develops a desire, vain desire. An evil desire. He follows it. That's nafs ammara. Wa ijabul mari bi nafsi. And the ujub. It's going to destroy a person. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said Al-Ijab ziddu al-Sawab Wa afatu al-Albab Al-Ijab ziddu al-Sawab This ujub It is all against achieving the perfection in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It means that the man who is struck with the ujub cannot achieve the perfection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa afatu al-Albab It's afa is a calamity for the reason because it deprives a person of using actualization of the reason and uh, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha she said wa inna al-ujba law kana rajula if the ujub would have been a personified figure is a concept is an idea or is a behavior of a person is our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, sorry, uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that, وَإِنَّ الْعُجُبَ If this ujub, this self-conceit, was supposed to be a personified character, كَانَ رَجُلَ su, It would have been the worst and deplorable person. And Sayyiduna, Abu Darda radiallahu anha, he said, أَلَامَةُ الْجَحْلِ salas. The sign of ignorance of a person, the sign of jahl. The sign of jahl is three. Al ujbu. The first one is ujub. The one, the man stuck with the ujub, the person stuck with the ujub is a jahil. Excessive talks without any benefit. There's alamatul jahl. Why yunha an shayin wa yatihi? A person is prohibited from something, but still he commits it. It's a sign of his, his ignorance. It's a sign of his jihal. So, this, uh, 
this bad quality of the nafs, this evil quality of the nafs, is going to harden the heart of a person. So you will not find a person that a person is having urge in his heart and his heart is soft. Sayyiduna Abu Wahb al-Mir Wazir rahimahullah says, Sa'al ibn al-Mubarak. I asked Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala, Mal kibar? What's arrogance? Call antazdari al-nas. That you defrate others. فَسَعَلْتُ عَنِ الْعُجُوبِ then, uh, then I asked him about ujub. Firstly, he asked about the kibar. And he said, kibar is that? You deflate others, whereas you glorify yourself. فَسَعَلْتُ عَنِ الْعُجُوبِ Then I asked him about the ujub. قال, أَن تَرَى أَنَّ عِنْدَكَ شَيْئًا لَيْسَ عِنْدَ غَيْرِكَ That you have this feeling that you possess a particular thing. Others don't possess this. لَا أَعْلَمُ فِي الْمُسَلِّينَ شَيْئًا شَرَ مِنَ الْعُجُوبِ I don't know anything more obnoxious with the Musalleen, with those who perform the Salah. Sharran, which is, which is the evil and obnoxious than the Ujub. Because the Amal develops a kind of Ujub in a person. And he is the ignorant one. He is the one who is suffering through this. Uh, uh, who is suffering through this vain glory or self-conceit. And this takes a person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This heart will never get the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart struck with the ujub will never feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure all the diseases of our heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our heart sound, salim and noble so that we can experience the taste of ibadah in dunya and thamaratul ibadah the fruit of ibadah in terms of salvation and najat in akhirah. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Subhanallah wa hamdihi, subhanakallah wa hamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru ka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.